tensions building all around you can feel it in the air it's more than a feeling a new reality everywhere i look and see the signs of the times yeah it's coming but they're all in the now everything you know it's all about the change see the sky crack and it rains down flames oh man they ain't ready for it this is something that they can't ignore coming down like a meteor this is more than a game you better get ready shock building all around you can feel it in the air it's more than a feeling a new reality everywhere i look and see the signs of the times yeah it's coming but they're all in the now everything you know it's all about the change see the sky crack and it rains down flames oh man they ain't ready for it this is something that they can't ignore coming down like a meteor this is more than a game you better get ready shock the world Shock the world. This is more than a game. You better get ready. Go ahead, get ready. Shock the world. Shock the world. All right, hello and welcome here from the Plano Ice Rink here in Dallas, Texas. Dylan Pescatore along with my man David. David, thank you for joining us. I've been alone for the first two games and now I get a little bit of a partner. Yes, well, and from the uh, competing team of the team in the app. But we're glad to be here. Your setup is uh, significantly better than what you're doing. So David's going to be on with me today as we take you through. 
Team Arizona Copper, they took game one 6-4 against Team California earlier today over at the Bob Ganey rink over in Dallas. Team Indiana lost 3-0 their first game against Team Texas. What do they have to improve? What do they have to get better today? Well, they have to put the puck in the goal. I mean, we really struggled with that. Um, we had really had a pretty good defense, but there were a few that sneaked through our, uh, our offense. So kind of sluggish, and I think it's just we haven't played together as a team for um, well, actually, since uh, uh, a few weeks ago, we had a scrimmage, but it's a pre-post team, so we don't they don't play a lot together on the ice, but they do know each other from uh, just playing together throughout their uh, whole careers. Let's take it through both goaltenders. For Team Arizona, Logan Gibbs started the first game today. Austin Shortle will start this one against Team Indiana, the Pinnacle High School senior. 6-1-160, Shortle gets the net. For Team Indiana, it's Andrew Bomer. Right. He is six foot, two oh five. What do we know about Bomer? What does he bring to the table? Uh, everything. I mean, it was really uh, his his. He helped his team win the state tournament this year. He is he is super solid within the uh, goal. And uh, and then uh, earlier today, No Langus was in the goal. He um, he did a pretty good job. Just a few of them got by him, but uh, I think you know you'll see some uh, really good play in the net from Andrew. Game three of the day in terms of all of Team Arizona. Team Black played at 8 a.m. today. They also played at 12.45. Team Black went 0-2, technically 0-1-1. They lost in the shootout. And now game two for both of these teams today. It's Maffeo with Putikov to start it off along with McCutcheon for Team Arizona on the forward set and Cal Butler as we'll get things going here. Team Indiana in the red. Team Arizona in the maroon going from left to right, Indiana going from right to left. And here we go off and running three periods of 15 minute action with only a one minute intermission. So stick around with us as these games go real quick. Butler holds it at the half wall, loose puck skating up with it, looking for it was Rahella. He lost it into the corner. Butler backhands it forward, taken away from Damrell as he'll use the wall looking to exit the zone. Puck pops up into the slot, still loose. Butler will backhand it down low. He had a man in Rahella down deep. As he'll hold it at the blue. Now to the near side. Maffeo lays a hit along with Butler. The puck bouncing here early in the first period. As Team Indiana still can't get it out, Niles will sweep it in. A strong first shift for Team Copper. It's right off the bench. And touching it was Ryan Jim. Here comes Team Indiana the other way. Taken off the sick of Coquit. And here comes Jim the other way. Jim, McCaughey, and Gramlich, the top unit for this team. Arizona Copper team back in front. Gramlich waits. He shoots. Oh, he man. scores. Reed Gramlich that. just one minute and 14 seconds into the first period. On the second shot on goal for Team Arizona, he had two goals in the first game, and he gets his third of the day right there. That's a tough one to see from our standpoint. You know, it, uh, we were hoping to, to get on the board earlier, but uh, you know, here we go. We'll go at it again. Gramley gets the goal. The assists will go to Jim and possibly McCaughey as well. But a good start for Team Arizona. They did not score the first goal against Team California. They do here in game number two today. Now back up to Jim. Jim all the way across, Gramlich darting into the circle. He'll turn with it. Still with it, dodges some checks. Gramlich still with it, all the way back across for Jim, caught up in his skates. Jim, McCaughey, and Gramlich, they know each other like the back of their hand. They've been playing with each other as this one will go down for an icing. What does that chemistry do when players have played with each other for years on end and they almost know where each other are without even looking? Yeah, I think that really helps quite a bit. But like I say, without getting on the ice together, playing with each other as much as uh, we'd like to see it, it's, it takes a couple games to get that up to speed where they do play more as a team together. Just two minutes in, Gramlich with the marker for Team Arizona. That's cutting in deep was Cooper Flynn. The senior out of Brophy. He's playing with his teammate Spencer Milstein as this puck goes wide. That was Quinar with the shot. It's a Quinar, Kane, and Flynn line. 
three heavy physical forwards all playing together as Engler's shot goes high and wide off the glass. Picked up and skated out by Team Indiana. They'll hold it in neutral. Kane caught up in his skates will drop it for Engler who puts a bounce shot in on Barmart. Quinar lost it along the wall. Carto looking to exit the zone. It goes up and into the netting. And a couple whistles early here in the first. We'll see a full change from Team AZ Indiana gets their change as well as the puck went out of play. Ganahl wins the draw back. French will backhand it across. Could have been a two-on-one. Ganahl caught up in his skates. The pass just a little bit behind him. McCutcheon cutting toward the net on the backhand. Took it deep. Jack Welch all the way back to Niles. His shot off the glass. Off the boards. It's McCutcheon looking for it. Getting there first is Hornback. He'll go off the wall and out. Sepien gives it right back. Caught up in the skates with Braun. Ganahl here's a two-on-one. His shot off the stick. Of the defender, Rahela, he got his stick down in the way as Ganahl was looking to take the shot on the two-on-one. McCutcheon will come back the other way. A three-on-three -three rush over the line. Stepien lost it. Welch looks the backhanded forward across the half wall. Stepien on the backhand, turns with it at the goal line, puts it in front, caught up in a few bodies. Back out to Niles at the blue. He walks, he shoots, he scores! Oh. Ethan Niles... 2-0, Team Arizona on a shot from the blue line. Ganahl had the 2-1-1 on -one rush. Rahela makes the play. Yeah. And from one chance, on man rush, you have a goal at the other end. Yeah, that's tough to see. You know, they, uh, Team Indiana had a, a nice setup. Hornback was just on the other side but your defender got their uh, stick down on the ice, broke that play up, and as you say, ended up as a goal for uh, Team Arizona. Ethan Niles gets the goal. Team Arizona up 2-0. This one comes right back out to the slot. Picked back up in neutral. Dropped from Maffeo from Putikov. Maffeo in the circle back across, and Putikov couldn't get his stick down. Here comes Tim Indiana the other way. Coquit. Looking to cut toward the center of the slot. Taking off his stick. Irelson back on D. Delayed offside here. As Cup had to come back and touch. Irelson gets it ahead. Tipped ahead from Putikov. Irelson and Putikov teammates with Hamilton High School. Division I champions back in 2020. Whipped on in. Off the top of the glass. It stays in play as Irelson will come back on the backhand. Team Indiana gets a change. Switchenberg on the backhand. He had a goal in game one. Had the second goal on a power play goal that really changed the game. It was 2-1 California. But right after the power play goal in the celebration, there was a penalty assessed for an unsportsmanlike conduct in terms of the celebration. As McCauley turns, his shot goes wide. Team Arizona scored on the incoming power play. McCauley shoots. It goes high off of Bomert and still loose for Jim. It's swiped out. Could have been a breakaway rush as cutting toward it was Farb. The defenseman for Team Arizona. That was Milstein getting back just in time. They look to stretch the ice, and they do. It was a long pass for Gramlick off his stick, which negates the icing. He has it behind the net. Gramlick at the half wall, surrounded by two Indiana forwards. It draws a breakaway, and here he comes. Farb on this break. He shoots off the stick. Of Shardle, he might have got a piece of the glove at that as well. Two chances for Farb on that breakaway. The second time is a charm as he gets it. Shardle makes his first big save of the day. Jim across the line for Gramlick in the slot. Gramlick backhand. Gramlick looking to go to McCaughey. Caught up with his skates. That far breakaway was the first shot on net for Indiana. A really good one at that. But Shardle was up to the task. What did you see on that breakaway rush? Uh, I mean, he had good position. He came up. He just, uh, that was a great save by your goalie. 
Here's Farb again. A backhand try that goes off the left pad of Chardell. That line showing the most offensive power so far for Team Indiana. The breakaway rush on two occasions as they look for the long stretch pass right through the middle of the ice. French stops the puck in center ice, gets it past Graham like at the end of his shift. Caught up in a couple skates, play is on side. Still loose in neutral and backhanded in by Ganau. Long pass through the center of the ice. Loose puck looking for Chase Kane, and it does. Quinar will chase up to it across the line. Kyle Quinar turns with it in the corner. He has 2D coming off the bench. He gets it down low as Cooper Flynn was fighting through a check. Gets it back out to Niles. Ethan Niles waits, hesitates, now walks down the wall. His shot didn't go all the way through. Quinar has it behind the net. This line, even from minute one of being on the ice, as Quinar has it behind the net, back in front. Cutting toward the net was Flynn right through the slot. This three forward set had the most success in terms of their four check in game one. A very heavy line in terms of their physicality. Now Quinar takes a hit back behind the net. It jumps back in front. Picked away by Team Indiana and they'll start up the rush. Hornback went down. It could have been a three on two rush. Still loose. Some loose neutral zone play from both sides so far early in this one. Flynn will go over the line. Looking to kill some time as he'll head all the way to the bench. More than halfway through period number one here in game two for both teams today. Now Friday, you have a full slate Saturday with two games for both teams. And then Sunday at least one as Shardo will grapple it up off the ice with 6.53 to go in the first. Through the first six, you got to say, right, Carter Ganaw, Ganaw is, I mean, yeah. one of the more impressive, and he's large, he's physical, but also he brings a lot of speed to the table. He does. We've got a few players there that have that sort of uh, speed. You saw Farb on the breakaway, and yeah. Hornback has shown a lot of promise as well. It goes past Shardles and Net. Coquit keeps it in at the blue. Irelson backhands it forward. Would have been a turnover from McCutcheon. Fortunate bounce gets it up to Stepien. To McCutcheon, this play is offside. Welch was cutting down the right side, and he was over the blue line just before the puck was. Welch would have had a good shot, but he was just a little bit early. You see the green decorations around this rink here in Plano, Texas. That's for the Dallas Stars. And they have had advertising all along the boards. They do a really good job with the junior program here in this area. Getting Texas hockey the popularity that it deserves. Cup is back behind. Takes a hit. Coquit at the half wall. Launched it toward the net. Tipped in front and just went wide. Getting a piece of it was Colin Nelson. Still loose, and the defender of Team Arizona just backhands it out. That was Irelson in front. Icing waved off. Kept it at the blue by Irelson. He'll backhand it forward. Bomer plays it down with the glove, and here comes Team Indiana. Cup puts it around his defender and back behind the net. He's the first one to the puck. Irelson takes a hit. A nice move from Maffeo exited the zone, but right back in goes the puck. Indiana gets a full change. Turnover, and oh. shot went high and wide. Farb came right off the bench. It came right to him. Another chance. Shardo goes diving. The stick goes around, and it goes in the back of the net. Oh, there we go. Consistent pressure and turnovers gives Farb a goal that's much needed for Tim Indiana. Chardle did everything he could. It was on his backside. It just popped out to Farb, and he deposits it in the back of the net. Yeah, it just bounced off two or three times, and it was, uh, you know, you can only protect that so many times as a goalie. And uh, our guys just happened to be at the right spot at the right time to put one in. So. You mentioned it. the first game was a little bit of a struggle in terms of the offense. What can one goal kind of open up the, uh, you know, so for proclaim dam in terms of the offense? I, I think you break that seal. I think it makes a huge difference in confidence and 
these boys and all of a sudden are, are uh, playing much better. They have that feel that yes, in fact, they can compete and they can put these goals in and put these pucks in. Team Indiana makes it two to one. Under five minutes to go in period number one. Niles and Gramlick, the goals for Team Indi Team Arizona, and far the goal for Team Indiana as he was trying to look for another. Finding his way through two Team Arizona defenders. McCaughey comes over the line on the far side. Takes a spill. No arm up as Gramlick will come down on the forecheck. Right back out to McCaughey. Uses his body position to keep the puck away from the defenders. He's trying to feed Englert at the blue. Jim and McCaughey caught up in that corner. Trying to fish it out. Englerth gloves it down at the blue. Puts it into the open corner. Gramlich first one to the puck. Along with McCaughey. It comes to the near side. And the breakout attempt still not successful. Gramlich turns with it. Along the wall. Gramlich looking to feed McCaughey in front. He's covered all over by Farb who's done it offensively and defensively so far today. Indiana comes back the other way, and backhanding in is Jackson Miller. He gets it in deep and goes for a change. McCaughey one more time, gloved by Bomer. He's going to keep it going. A game that started out 5-1 in shots, now 6-6. Six six. As Team Indiana has found their legs. Flynn cutting toward the net and tipped in front by Kane, but just wide of Bomert's net. Indiana the other way. Shardle pads it toward the corner. Dylan Carto looking to find it. It comes right back to him. Carto in the circle. He puts it off the side of the net and back behind. Demlo fighting for position as well. Hosbeen with Kane and Niles, and they fish it out. Quiner gets the red, and we'll start one more rush. Kyle Quiner from Mountain Ridge puts it on net, saved by Bomert. Indiana will come back the other way. Couldn't get it in deep, tipped in from Kane. Quiner couldn't find the loose puck, or else he would have been on a breakaway from the circles in. Cooper Flynn, right in front of the Indiana bench, couldn't control. Rahel almost put his man right back into the bench. Niles ahead for Kane. That line's been on for a while. He's going to go for a change. And it brings on Welch, Stepien, and McCutcheon. Back out to Rahel. Safe, easy save from Bomert with the pad. Two minutes to go in period number one. Welch fighting for it below the circles. It pops out to the blue line, Rahel. It came right back to him. He has to race forward at the red and gets it over to Niles. Ethan Niles for Parker Stepien. Caught up at the blue. Tipped ahead. Backhanded past Braun from Rahela. As the puck jumps on everybody. This time it jumps on Rahela. 2 on one the other way for Indiana. Braun trying to feed his man in front. As cutting toward was Hornback. Another loose puck in the circle all the way across. Coquit shot, goes wide of the short side, and Caroms all the way out and back into the Indiana defensive end. 70 seconds to go here in period number one. It was two quick goals in the first five minutes for Team Arizona, and then Team Indiana had a good two-minute stretch there, and Farr put it in the back of the net to make it 2-1. to one. Back out to Coquit at the blue. His shot blocked down, still loose. Irelson gives it right back to the blue line. And the shot from Coquit, his second, in just a matter of seconds, was blocked down. Stepien picks off the pass. And he'll feed Butler ahead with Welch. Welch and Butler. He'll enter the zone, tried to circle. Coquit took it off his stick. And Braun backhands it forward. Irelson will have to chase it back. Nelson picks up the puck, trying to feed his man in front. It's uh, taken off his stick under 30 seconds now as Maffeo will go from near side to far. Butler at the red, couldn't get it ahead as Switchenberg was trying to jump the rush. 
Captain and Jennings lose it and hits the netting right before the first period buzzer can hit. The ice has definitely opened up here as the period has gone along. It seems like it. It seems like they're feeling a little bit more comfortable out there. And at least Team Indiana, um, I mean, Team Arizona looked like they were on top of when they came out of the, you know, when they started. So. Maffeo and Nelson meet up in the circle with 10 seconds to go. Jennings backhands it forward. Looking for Cup as he enters on his backhand. With three, with two, it's caught up in neutral. And Maffeo's touch will end period number one. 2-1 Two -one Team Arizona after one in a period that had three goals and definitely more offense in the beginning of the period than as the period went along. Yeah, I agree with you. I, mean, I, just, I think uh, Arizona obviously came out very, very strong. Uh, caught us off guard, but as the, team, as the play went along, we saw much more even play. It, Definitely got more even as the period went along. Shots 9-7 with Team Arizona in front. We'll be back in just about 30 seconds for period number two. Back here for period number two from Plano, Texas. Game four of the day for Team Arizona. Game two for Team Copper. Game two for Team Indiana. Game four overall with Team Arizona sending two teams, Copper and Black. Team Black went 0-1-1 today, losing in regulation earlier today to Team Midwest and then losing to Team Idaho in a shootout. Team Copper winning their first game against California 6-4 and now up 2-1 against Team Indiana as we start period number two. Butler will put it off the glass and in deep. Wollington going from far side to near. Farb knocks it ahead. Putakov not catching up to this one along with Maffeo. A bouncing puck right over that Stars logo in neutral. Entering the zone was Rahela as he tried to put it in front with Niles. Maffeo will hold. First 15 minutes gone now in the middle frame. The period of the long change here in the second. As Maffeo was cutting right down the slot, the pass was tipped all the way out to neutral. Niles will have to chase this one. Indiana with numbers as Farb was cutting down into the corner. It jumps out to Maffeo. Nick Maffeo turns with it on a dime, looking for the trailer. He'll go to the far side. Kudakov holds back out to the blue. Angler's shot goes wide. Rahela takes a big hit along the half wall. Jennings really rode him into those walls. It's a short class here at this rink with a good amount of netting at that as well. Now Kane takes a hit from Jennings. He's having a hit and spree so far this shift. Jennings and Kame, you look at both of those, it's almost more like a boxing match than a hockey, than a hockey game, right? Yep, yep. Very physical, very big kids. At the side of the net, Flynn, he scores! Wow. Oh, how what did he find the angle? What Cooper Flynn came from the goal line, turned, flipped his wrist, and somehow went over the shoulder of Bomert into the back of the net. Just over 90 seconds into this second period. I definitely want to see another look at that one. Somehow Flynn found it, found a hole. Yeah, and I think uh, from the angle he was and the folks in front, Bomber, I just don't think he had a good vision of where that puck was coming from. I mean, he, he just really snuck that in. Beautiful shot. Cooper Flynn gets his first of the weekend. Makes it 3-1, to one, Team Arizona. Bomer's going to head to the bench. It, I think that puck might have hit him in the helmet and a strap came loose. 
uh, you saw it on the replay. It, it hit him, and he and he noticed it, and they reached back. And as a goal, you're going to see this one more time in the top left. He reaches up that right shoulder, yeah. and then he felt that puck's going behind him. So Bummer's going to head to the bench, and we're going to have a goaltending change yep. here for Team Indiana. Noah Langus is coming back out. Well, so Noah Langus is going to come in. The, is that right? the Penn High School student, rising senior. As Langus takes over a net for Team Indiana, just two minutes into this second period. Actually, I think Bomer is back out there. It's number 30, yeah. Jim all the way across looking for McCaughey. As it comes right back in front, McCaughey, blocker save. As it comes back in front, this time the net comes off. So Bomer is still in, but he changed his helmet. Get, you yeah. saw he had that white helmet earlier, and that strap came loose. So he gets a little bit of help from his, his teammate in, in Langness and yeah. gets right back in there. A good shift from the first line for Team AZ Copper. Yeah. They're keeping the pressure on him, that's for sure. Just over two minutes gone here in period number two. Milstein tried to keep it in at the blue. Angler had to turn his hips and go all the way back to neutral. Gramlich tips it in. He goes past Wollington. Stops in the corner. Pushes off the wall. Gramlich oh, in front. Oh, what a pretty play. Gramlich, Jim, finished off by McCaughey. That was a beautiful play. Now that was pretty. You're going to see Gramlich in the corner. He finds Jim. And McCaw, he has an open net to finish it off. A tic-tac-toe type yeah, of goal. Yeah. It's hard to defend against those, I think, when you got your players in the right spot. Team Indiana just didn't have a defender in there to block that, you know, to help, uh, help uh, him out, you know. The bomber needed some uh, assistance. McCaw, gets the goal. He had one goal in the first game today. That was on the power play. It was the fourth goal of the game against Team California. But when you have that chemistry with those two other guys, we mentioned that they play together not only on travel, but they play against each other. McCaughey and Gramlich's teams in terms of high school, they actually played together, played against each other in the state championship in Arizona. It was a 3-3 game going to overtime, and McCaughey had the game-winning goal in overtime. And Osh was very lucky and thankful that we get to host our state playoffs at Mullet Arena in Tempe where the Arizona Coyotes play and the Arizona State Sun Devils Division One team plays. It was a great atmosphere and a great place to be. Two years in a row that we've had two overtime games in the state championship. McCaw, he was the hero this year. Marcello Lane, the hero two years ago for Desert Vista. Braun looking forward in his skates. Picked off by Flynn. Knocked ahead for Quinar. Knocked off the puck by Damrell. Kane looking for the man in front. Flynn turns around and shoots it. A good save by Bomert as he closed his legs. That was a loose puck that just somehow ended up on the stick of Flynn. He turned and he fired it. Numbers the other way for Indiana. Hornback lost it. McKee takes a hit from Flynn as he just backed it up into him. This will be an icing. Three plus minutes gone here in the second. And two goals in the early periods for Team Arizona. It seems like it's taking Team Indiana, uh, maybe it's just a coincidence, a little bit of time at the start of periods to get going. I think so. And you know, that getting a couple quick goals, that's tough. It's tough to come back from. You know, it's tough to build that momentum back. And now going from 2-1 to 4-1, it's that's it makes it that much harder. Goes all the way out to Welch. Colquitt keeps it in at the backhand. Stepien picks it up and moves it ahead for McCutcheon. Jennings back. Welch picked it off. Jack Welch back out to Englerth. Welch was very noticeable in game one against California. Put up very good numbers in his... High school season with Hamilton. He gets to play a lot with his teammate and Shane Irelson. As it comes right back out, step in, look to feed the front. Couldn't get it past Jennings, and out comes Cup. 
cut from his backhand. Try to get it across. It comes right back to him. He plays it off the wall. Gets it down deep. Watch closely by Switchenberg. Backhand attempt by Colquitt. It goes back out to Jennings who fires. And a save by Shardle. That was not an easy save. And a good low shot from Jennings through traffic. Yeah. You know what really impressed me by watching Team Arizona, especially down the offense, man, is how patient they are. You know, it, it, it just it, it seems like they uh, just are, are playing much better as a team currently uh, as it comes through. But that patience to set up those shots. Colquitt toward the net got deflected up and into the netting. Everybody wants to score. Everyone wants to put the buck in the back of the net. But you said it. If you take that extra one or two seconds, you can set up a much better play. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 12 to 9, Team Arizona leads in shots on net. As it went off an Indiana stick, it'll bring the faceoff back out to neutral. Maffeo pushed it forward, but Jennings was right there for it. Gets it over to Coquit and gets it in deep. Niles ahead looking for Butler. Shardle pushes it toward the corner. Jennings comes down and pinches in. Keeps the puck into the corner. The centering pass says wide open in front was Eggert. Couldn't find him. Now he does. And he scores. Wow. A slick shot in the slot. Gets it past Shardle and makes it 4-2. to two. Tim Indiana with their second marker of the day. That was, uh, and that's Farb, Farb again, again. Yeah, right? Go for Farb. That play was really set up by Eggert as he was in front. He had the initial chance, and then it came right back out to Farb. Two goals for Team Indiana, two goals for Farb. Yeah. And that's, you're in a great position there. No one's really around you, but... It's from a very tight angle. Yeah. And it's not an easy shot to get past the goalie with how big they are with their equipment. All the credit to Farb to get it past Shardle and cut the lead to 4-2. to two. Jim past Jennings, side of the net. Backhand try from Gramlich. He gets it right back. Watch by Colquitt. Gramlich takes it to the top of the zone. Across from Milstein. Milstein has a man in front. Save from Bomert as he sticks out his right pad. The breakaway pass. That's cutting in was Hosbin. Goes wide. We've been here for three, four games so far, but you're seeing a lot of the long breakaway pass plays right down the middle of the ice and a couple inches away, a couple seconds away from Hosbin being all alone. Right. Off the draw, Indiana with a lot of speed. And here they come. Hornback on the backhand, tries to feed it in front. It went off a six, still loose, and then it went wide. As wide open in front was Ganal. He put it wide at the short side. Shot from the blue. Taken away, Ganal. Now in the corner. With Braun. 8.40 to go in period number two. 4-2, Team Arizona in front. This shot from the blue was deflected down. Braun goes to the corner with Milstein. And now behind the net. It jumps out to Gramlich. Tried to get it past the defender, but a good play from Wellington. He had his stick right on the wall. If he didn't, it would have been a two-on-one the other way. This one goes wide, icing the call. Talk about that smart play from the defender, Wellington, there along the wall. Yeah, I mean... Just uh, being at the right place and going after the puck at the right time, keeping it from, uh, you know, getting in a tough location. So, I, it's, it's exciting to watch these, uh, this level of hockey uh, and to see these guys playing together. But, um, you know, those, they just keep getting better and better as they play, the more they play together. A lot of these kids have. Of course, known each other forever. They've played together for years on end. and With and against. Like you said, and getting them and seeing them kind of advance in their hockey careers. A lot of these kids are, are, are younger, right? Yeah. 
tough for the team of Arizona, but they have a lot of sophomores on, on both teams. And they say, wow, they have two more years at the high school level. How much better can they get? And, what, you know, I've been with the, with the high school league for now three years. It's almost crazy seeing a kid. You see him in April. The season ends. Summer happens. They come back and fall as a different player. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. It's, and really, these players are made in that off season. How much they, how much time they put in, the, you know, doing the workouts and uh, you know, putting muscle on. It's also important getting quicker, building up the legs. Some of them you almost can't even recognize, oh, yeah, right? They put on some muscle. Maybe they grow a little bit. They have a growth spurt. Big hit from Quinar. As Lee he laid out Colquitt right in the circle of the defensive zone of Team Indiana. Cup makes a nice move in neutral. Gets it across to Colquitt. Switchenberg steps up on it. He lost it, and Irelson will go back for it. 13 to 12, the shot total with Team Arizona in front from just one. They started out this game up 5 to 1. Team Indiana has done more than held their own in terms of that shot category. Switchenberg, long pass, there it is. Welch on the backhand, Welch to the net, Welch! Puts it off the outside of the post. He somehow still had that puck with him. He waited, waited, waited past Bomer, and you hunter a little bit of a ring on the outside of the post. Let's see it one more time. Welch on the backhand, and he held it, and he held it, he got it right back. Bomer stayed with him the whole way. Yeah. And it forced him uh, to the outside and wasn't able to get that angle back into the back. Of the it was Damrell back on D. Yeah. And as a D, when you give up that inside position, you can almost feel a little bit, uh, you almost feel a little bit useless, right? right? What can I do? I don't want to take a penalty. Damrell did a very good job there on defense, doing what he can within the rules, of course, of the game. Rahela gets it ahead. McCutcheon looking to push it forward. Caught by Welch in neutral. McCutcheon will take it along the near side. Pass Eggert. McCutcheon still with it. Couldn't keep the zone, and everyone's going to have to touch back. Rahela tried to dump it in. Delayed offside here. Or they say it is offside. That was a close one at the blue as it took two tries from Rahela to get it deep. The first try was deflected down. Damrell tries the wall. He gets it right back and will backhand it across to Miller. Damrell at the red. McCutcheon can't backhand it past him. Stepien fighting for it. Welch picks up the puck. Welch with a nice stop and go move and he put it high. Welch's momentum was all going to the left. At that circle, he stops on a dime and lets a shot go. Just a little bit high of the blocker side of Bomert, who, who gets his helmet back at that as well. You know, goalies always known as the superstition kind, right? They're a little bit odd. I'm sure no one wants two different helmets during the game. No. Well, he fixed that strap on his original helmet as McCutcheon puts it toward the net. Nice block from Colquitt as he goes down and cleared all the way down where Sharda will raise the hand and icing the call. In the first game today, as this was the shot from Welch, really impressive to see him kind of stop on his edges and fire back the other way. Here's the Maffeo line along with Butler and Putikov. Maffeo wins the draw and pushes it forward. Somehow still has the puck on him. Takes a stick from Jennings who has the puck pinned in the corner. Butler looking to fish it out. It's almost like he has a pitchfork and he's looking to just stab at the puck in the corner. McKee picks it up and backhands it in. Under five minutes to go in this middle frame. Budakov looking to fish it out. Out comes Milstein. 2-1-2 two -two rush. On the far side, sharp angle try. This, this net is off its moorings. The referee is going to blow its whistle for it. Bomer pushed up against it on the sharp angle try. Coming down the right side was Putikov and Butler. 
They're going to have to fix this net. We were over at the uh, Bob Ganey rink earlier today, and Earl, uh, along with this one, it's been net problems all day long. I think they got to drill better holes, or it was a play where the puck went to the side of the net, and they almost thought that it went in. It didn't go in legally. It was kind of slid in because the goal wasn't all the way down on the ice. So we've seen that issue so far today. Hopefully it stops right there. It's so frustrating when you're uh, on an offensive move and uh, you're getting a good place set up and then all of a sudden they're calling the floor. And you're and you think about that as a goalie, it must you know, make you think a little bit more. Hopefully that puck stays on. Nice move by Hornback. Cuts in front, saved by Shardo. Rebound try at the side of the net. And he makes the second save. Really nice move from Hornback as he was cutting in. He stops on a dime and moves back to the backhand. Just didn't get a good uh, clean shot at that kind of, just tried to slowly drift it in, probably five hole, but did get ni nice getting around him. Yeah, good cover up there. He got in tight, he was looking to go five hole. Milstein, who was the defender he went past, got back in time to at least deter the shot in some type of way. As this one comes right back in front, Shardle makes the save, still loose. The official blows the whistle, and he points toward his chest. There was a whistle earlier, and it seemed like the whistle was a, a little bit too early, and the puck was still loose. This one, a little bit of the benefit of Team Arizona as Shardle was flopping around in his blue crease. The official almost saying, that was my bad, yeah, right. right? That's what it looked like. Saying that he blew the whistle a little bit too early. Puck was still loose. Centering pass. Looking for Graham Liquid's Jim. Back out to McCaughey. McCaughey will circle it. Back in front looking for Jim. Loose puck. Graham Lick couldn't put it home. Graham Lick takes a spill. This one's going to go all the way down. And Switchenberg couldn't touch it. Icing the call. Yeah, sir, overall, these refs are doing a great job, I think. And uh, it's a clean game so far, which is what you always like to see. And that's where you're going to jinx it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then we're going to get a penalty. I think it was uh, eight or nine penalties we had in game one today against exactly. California. Yeah. All of them were fair penalties. Yeah. But, you know, just not the type of game you want to see. Yeah. And I think we had a, about the same, six or seven anyway, of that game we played this morning. Carto will come into the corner. Goes from near side to far. Eggert will carry across the Arizona line. Drops it back. Picked off by McCaughey. Puck bounces on him. He still holds it. Looking for Jim on that breakaway pass. Comes back to McCaughey on the backhand. McCaughey turns, trying to find the trailer. That was Gramlich. Switchenberg will chase up to this one. Off the glass. Gramlich lets it go. Jim picks it up. Jim on the backhand for McCaughey. Caught up in a couple sticks. What a move from Graham. Like somehow kept that puck in the zone all the way across. Shot from McCaughey. He goes wide to the blocker side of Bomert. Switchenberg steps up now. Switchenberg, sharp angle, try. And Gramlich was trying to just tap it in. Another long offensive zone shift for this line. Gramlich shot. Got blocked down off a of shin pad. Two on one the other way. Miller and Farb. Nice play from Switchenberg to stop that before it got anywhere in terms of dangerous. Gramlich on the backhand. Gramlich toward the net. And Bomert goes into the spread eagle. Back in front. He somehow got a piece of it as McCaughey was back in front. Very similar to that goal he scored earlier. Bomert saw it. And we're going to get that first penalty. <laughs> Spoke too soon. Right? Yeah. That was quite a uh, recovery by Bomber to... Uh, he had behind the net. Block. It was Gramlich cutting toward. And then McCaughey was back in front all alone, which is never a sight you want to see. But Bomer did a good job of coming from his post, pushing off and getting that blocker out. The penalty is against Team Indiana. Miller is going to go to the box. So Jackson Miller to the box. Power play for Team Arizona. They had two power play goals in game one today. Okay. 
Kane, Flynn, Quinar, Rahella, and Niles, the five-man unit. McKee will try to come back the other way shorthanded. Flynn does a good job of stopping that opportunity. Coquit back, it's pinned to the boards from Flynn. Jennings chases after this one. Rahella pinches down the wall. Quinar on the forehand, back out to the blue. Niles walks it down, turns it over to Coquit. Who puts it off the netting, and that faceoff's going to come right back to where he started. It's a very low glass along the half wall near the penalty area. The only high glass is behind the net. Chances to bounce it back off of those, uh, you know, with being more of a blast. Jimenez did pretty well with the penalty kills last time. I think they had maybe five. Uh, we had they did not have any uh, power play goals against them this morning. Quinar slips it back, comes in on Bomer. Save! Oh, he got the rebound try. Kane was in the slot, and Bomer makes another big save. You're going to remember that one if Team Indiana can get right back into this game. He's made two big ones in the last few minutes. That save on Kane and McCarthy just a couple minutes ago. He was wide open in the slide. Bomer with two big blocker saves. Flynn back in front. Kane's backhand try. Another try and Bomer with a nice save as Niles was the trailer. He had to go from his right to his left. Bomer doing a good job of keeping his team within two. Now, these are coincidental when it comes to the penalties. You have Miller for Indiana, and you have Irelson, which keeps us at five on five. You saw Miller go to the box. Irelson was a little bit sneaky to the box. He kind of caught her eye. <laughs> but he did make his way in there. Bomert with another blocker save. 20 seconds to go here in the middle frame. Braun with Rahella. McCutcheon looking for it. Pin to the wall with 10. McCutcheon backhands it forward with 3, with 2. And that'll take us to the end of period number 2. Period 1 ended 2-1, to one, so the score just doubles. Yeah. Two more for Team Arizona with Flynn and McCaughey. And Farb gets the other as they play the great Sultans of Swing from Dire Straits here in Plano, Texas. We'll be right back for period number three. Back here for period number three from Plano, Texas. 4-2, Team Arizona in front at the start of the third period. A fresh 15 on the clock. 
Two more goals for Team AZ in that second, one for Team Indiana. It's been uh, copy-paste in terms of period one and period number two. It's been two quick goals from Team AZ and then a goal from Team Indiana right in that middle of period. It happened in the first, it happened in the second. And we'll see if it happens here in the third. Englerth back behind his own net. Back out to Welch, who will circle in his own defensive zone. Two goals from Team Indiana from Farb. Four goals from Team Arizona, all from different players. Gramlich, Niles, Flynn, and McCaughey, the goal scorers. Cup couldn't pull the trigger. Welch will skate it out. Welch on the backhand, caught up in the official skates. Gets it down low for Stepien. Stepien for Welch. He has McCutcheon down low and goes to him off of his stick. Stepien backhands it along the wall. They continue to cycle on the outside of the zone in the first minute here in the third. Cup will skate with it right in the center of the zone and does a good job at that. He took it from his defensive end through neutral and backhands it in and gets a full change. Welch to the center of the ice for Stepien. Gets it off the skate of Miller. Stepien's long range shot is blocked down. He's looking to get his team a change and he does. And now he'll get one as he skates back. A good stick from Switchenberg. Took it off the stick of Farb. Switchenberg not only stopped that chance, this one goes all the way down for an icing. But he also had that two on one earlier that was developing and before he let both forwards kind of spread out and get that two-on-one action cutting in, he got his stick in the way. And that's exactly what they teach defenders to do. Right. That's, uh, and that was key. You know, break that up, otherwise that could be another goal. Austin Shardle so far today, 13 saves on 15 shots. Bomert has been the star for Team Indiana. Uh, without him, this could be a four, maybe five goal game. He's really done a good job of keeping his team in it and within reason, especially late in that second period with two big saves with his blocker. Switchenberger across the line. Puts it in on net. Bomert couldn't control as a few sticks were flying. And they're going to blow the whistle as Maffeo couldn't keep it in at the blue. He thought he did, but the men in charge, the officials, did not. Which is usually what happens, yeah. right? Well, <laughs> and you always kind of wonder, because sometimes you'll see a little white in between the puck and the blue line, but uh, it kind of makes it way back in. They let that go, but that was right at his feet. So I don't think he had a choice but to call that. It was right in front of that team Indiana bench. Yeah. And sure showed up once helping. more. <laughs> Kudakov looking for Maffeo. It comes in and sweeps all the way out and all the way down as the puck rolls and just reaches the red line for an icing. Both teams in their second game of the day today. We'll have two games for each team tomorrow, and then one game on Sunday. Same thing for Team Black as well for Team Arizona. In the Lone Star Showcase here in 2024, hosted here in about 20 minutes north of Dallas, in Plano, Texas. Irelson. Off the wall, Pudakov across for Butler, and his shot goes over Bomert. The defenseman got back with his stick. That was Coquit getting in the way. McKee gloves it down. He'll put it ahead. Two on two rush for Team Indiana. McKee stops on a dime and laid out by Irelson. McKee then puts Irelson and gives him a cross check, and that's going to draw the whistle. Irelson. He lays out McKee. We're going to see if we can get another look at this. McKee does a good job of stopping on a dime, but Irelson read it the whole way. A clean shoulder-to-shoulder yeah. hit, and then McKee gets back up, gives him a little, uh, and he gives him a little side. extra tap, right? And that's when Irelson you know, started flexing that arm and brought the whistle. I don't think a penalty was called, was it? No penalty call. I think it was just because Irelson because looked a little shooken yeah. up there.
officials going over with the scores table. The faceoff will be in Team Indiana's end as that where the play was concluded. Garb, Braun, and Hornback, the forward set. Jim turned it over. In the high slot, Braun's shot was blocked down off the stick of Niles. Hella tries the far wall. Here's that top unit for Team Arizona. Cole Quitt looks to put it forward. Loose puck, Braun's on it. Niles back, got it past Niles. Braun shoots, save from Shardle. That's an impressive play by Braun as he found his way through one and then past Niles as he found it on the forehand. We're going to see another look at it here. He had to drag it all the way across Niles and he got a nice That's shot good, off. Yep. Shardle held his left arm on the glove side to his chest. Three and a half gone here in the last frame. Niles caught up in the corner. Goes forehand, backhand. Braun giving him trouble once more. Kept in by Hornback. Hornback looking to drag. Niles lays him out. Still loose in the high slot. Braun still with it. Braun all the way across. Colquitt in the circle. His shot blocked down off of McCaughey. And that net comes off yep, comes one more time. Yep. It's been a problem all day long. It's that far post on the glove side of Shortle that's given the most problems when he pushes off from left to right. Here in the third, the physicality picking up a little bit more. You saw two big hits. Yeah. I think you see Team India starting to feel a little bit of little desperation here. They still have 11 minutes left, but... Uh, Team India is going to need to, to tie it up. We've had one in each period so far today. A few key chances here in the third. Chardell has been up to task. Yep. Quinar with some room across the logo. Offside as the puck just jumped on him. Nineteen saves for Andrew Baumart today. I don't think that tells the whole story. No. Uh, you know... Once he, once he really seemed to come into his own in that second period, some of those blocks and shot, uh, he made were just uh, phenomenal. And like you say, kept that close. Otherwise, uh, we'd be looking at a quick third period here. Look at the save total, and yes, four goals given up, but a lot of those saves were grade A opportunities. Mm -hmm. A lot on rebounds as well that Bomert had to be quick to react to. Gramlick in the corner. Looking to backhand it across. Jennings will hold and skate it ahead. He flips it out to neutral. Angler turns it over. Colquitt the other way. Colquitt on the backhand. Save from Shardle as he just held his glove above his pad and gets the whistle. Good speed from Colquitt right down the middle. He's fast. Has always been fast. Nelson loses the draw to Kane. We'll start with it right behind. Milstein back behind his own net. We'll start the 200 feet journey. Quinar along the wall. Quinar with Kane cutting in front. Stick got in the way of the pass across. Flynn. Angler at the blue. His shot goes wide. Kane looking for Flynn all the way across. Spencer Milstein toward the net. Went wide to the short side. Might have hit a stick in the way. Angler toward, and Baumert's going to make the save and hold. Now you mentioned it earlier, and this was a little bit off here, that a lot of these kids are not from the same area in Indiana. They have, you know, barely met. But it's really nice when you have not only your brother on the team, but you can get a little bit of connection there. Yeah. And yeah, the Colquitt uh, brothers. The Colquitt's actually their cousins. The cousins. Uh, yeah, and they, they've had a long line of uh, uh, hockey players in that family. But uh, those two, yeah, uh, Joel... Coquit, who's the younger, 21 and 22, is Quinn Coquit. He's uh, the older brother. Or I'm sorry, cousin. And they just had that chance to make it 4-3. On a good save from Shardle. Quinar across the line. 
Point our shot in the glove of Bobert. It seems like he's gotten better with more pucks toward him. Yeah. And sometimes goal is like a little bit more rubber toward their way, but he's really kind of locked in. It kind of turned right through the midway of that second period. Yeah, I think you're right. The other thing, though, that can happen to these goalies that you notice is that he's got a couple goals, and all of a sudden it starts working in their head, and it can, it can take a pretty bad turn. So it's nice to see him rebound after those and really play some great, great uh, hockey. So it comes all the way across. Switchenberg has to go and chase after it. He does just that. Off the side of the net, Charles didn't know where it was. That net's given both goalies problems on that, on that near side. Step in, picks it up in the circle. Turns with it, took a spill in the process. He goes to chase after this one. He's the first one to the puck in that far corner. Under nine minutes to go in the final frame. Welch will keep the cycle going. Niles keeps it in. Welch down low for McCutcheon. Good shift in terms of the cycle for McCutcheon. Oh. He turns it over on the backhand pass. Two on one the other way. Pass across. Backhand try safe from Shardle as he just got in the way of the Far backhand try from Hosbane. It's always dangerous when the forward takes it to the top of the zone. But a blind backhand oh, yeah. pass, that's asking for trouble. Yeah, but when it works, it's really right? impressive. <laughs> Although that almost went the other way. It's said. playing with fire. Yeah. Eight minute mark here in the third. Shardle bails out McCutcheon on that mistake. Back out to the blue, Rahella does keep the blue line. Down low, in front, looking for Butler. Puck jumps on Putakov. Remember, there's no ice cuts here until after the game ends, so the ice could be a little bit tough here in the third. I talked with a couple players after game one against California. Reed Gramlick had a breakaway in the third period, and he said he couldn't pull off any, any moves. The ice was very tough, and a lot of snow built up along each crease. Putakov nice cutting in. Move. Nice shot nice and a shot. save from Bomert. It went through him, but wide of the net. On the backhand, McKee. Kudakov lays a hit. Centering pass, finds the sick of McKee. He'll come the other way. Him and Irelson had a little dust up earlier. Yemlov's shot goes high and off the crossbar. Might have got a piece of the iron. As Demlo was cutting in, and the puck just found him as it went off the stick of McKee. And he went high blocker on Chardle. Kind of surprised him a little bit. As the clock ticks down, you're going to see a lot of chances taken here from Team Arizona. Defenseman pinching as this one goes down for icing. We're going to see that replay. It, it had to catch some sort of iron. McKee almost with some sort of a drop pass. Demlo shot. It did. It got yeah, the crossbar. It did, yep, right over the top of it. It almost caught where the post hits the crossbar because it came out the other side. Ganau takes it. Braun looking to move it ahead. Hornback lost it to Gramlick. Cole quit right there for him. McCaughey. Takes it himself over to Jim. Jim, watch from Jennings. Takes a shove as it comes right back in front. Good defensive positioning from Hornback. He comes back the other way. Gramlick comes back on the back check and took it away. 6.05 on the clock. Wollington plays it in neutral. And swiped in from Ganau. Wichenberg, Jim, Gramlich. Gramlich on the forehand. Gramlich backhand try. Tried to find McCaughey all the way across. A stick got in the way. The arm is up. Will it have enough? Icing waved off. Switchenberg over to Milstein. Almost lost it. Jim comes back. Trying for the breakaway pass. Nice play from French to break that up. French had to get that inside positioning 
to stop the breakaway pass or else Gramlich is all alone. Yeah. Niles for Quinar. Jim lost it. Nelson pushes it ahead. You see a lot of that snow built up in front of each bench. Definitely favors the defense, it favors the goaltenders. Nelson to Cup, takes a shove from Flynn and gives it right back to Niles. King to Rahela. Weinar pushes his man in McKee. Delayed offside, yeah. Flynn touches up and then I'll draw the whistle. 434 to go in the third. Yeah, where you you talk about the ice. We're so used to having a cut between the second and third periods that at our first game this morning when that second period ended, we all started leaving the ice. They had to call half our players <laughs> back on. I just think it's, it's a good practice to have. I mean, especially at this level. But, you know, they're trying to keep the tournament going. So I guess that's a lot of games, point. of course, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. You'd love to have a clean ice for the third. Four thirty to go. Eggert taken to the wall from Kane. Niles steps up, takes hit from Eggert, goes down. Hand pass is the call. You mentioned it's been a very clean game. Only we haven't had a penalty. No, right? That first no, call was a coincidental. Yeah. But no, Offsetting. no minor penalty with right. the power play. Yeah. Which is good and bad for the special teams coaches and the guys on the power play. True. Not their favorite. For the guys on the penalty kill, probably more their style. But you always, you know, it is kind of fun to watch those and see how they develop. Them, you know? It's been a very strong game, five on five for both sides. As Farb looks to feed in in front, Quinar comes back to take it away and flip it out to neutral. Flynn applies the pressure under four minutes to go in period number three. Flynn, puck goes back to Engler at the blue, he waits, he shoots along the ice and Baumert makes the save. Gonna keep an eye on the Indiana netminder if they can get any possession. Right in front, Rahela with a shot save, rebound, Baumert somehow got the right pad, wrap around try, we're gonna get the whistle as the net comes off once more. That was a good fury of offense from Team Arizona. It started with Engler shot from the blue, and then Rahela came down from the blue line and Bomert, it was more of a reaction save. He had no time to even kind of move his body. Yeah, I think those better goalies, that's they just naturally do that. And you can see though, Team Arizona's putting the pressure. I mean, 28 to 19 shots on goal. I mean, if Team Indiana wants to have a shot at uh, getting back, they need to get more shots on goal. And look at that impressive save. Yeah, I don't know how Bomert somehow saw that through because Welch shot it, but there was a lot of traffic yeah. in front. Yep. Andrew Bomer has been very impressive. There's another save on Welch. Rebound in front. McCutcheon was fighting for it. And the flurry of whistles continue. That was the 30th shot on net for Team Arizona as Welch let it fly one more time. And then you saw McCutcheon fighting for the rebound as Bomer went down in the butterfly. Milstein chases this one back. Osbein on the four check. Along with Carteau. Demlo's shot got blocked down off a leg. Welch launches it toward neutral, neutral ice. Englerth will chase it back under three minutes now. Keeping an eye on Bomert as cutting in front backhand try goes high and wide. That was Haas being right open in the slot, but a stick got in the way. Sharp angle try from oh. Denlo, and like a fly ball that goes into the net, into the glove of Shardle. I've seen a few of those go in. I mean, that was just almost like a softball throw that was just slowly careening through the air. I think Shardle was almost gearing up for it to be harder. Right. And then he had to kind of reset and say, this almost feels like slow motion. Yeah, you've seen some of those just They're go gonna right They're going to bring uh, Bulmer to the bench. So six on five for Team Indiana as they're down two with 2.44 to go. Mm -hmm. 
Canal pushes it off the draw. Braun at the half wall. Team Indiana looks to set it up. Coquit at the top. Down to Braun. They need two in the next 2.30. Braun, nice move. Tries to move in front. Chardell holds the post. Comes right back. Hornback can't control. Everybody's going to have to touch up. Oh. Loose puck. That's it's trouble. Kudakov all alone, and he Ooh. missed the net. He didn't see Colquitt go down. Get a wide open net. This one comes in front oh. in the back of the net. Goal for Team Arizona. The man in front. I'm going to get a name. That's Butler. That's Cal Butler, who was right in front. He didn't have to, but he tapped it in. You saw Putikov kind of backhanded. He didn't see Colquitt go down. Yeah. And then a fortunate bounce comes in front. And Butler finishes the job. I don't know if he got a piece. We'll have to see on the official scoring. Interesting to pull the goalie that early on. And, you know, usually you're seeing that happen uh, the minute or so left. I guess felt it was kind of optimal time. And unfortunately, yeah, it's getting out of uh, reach. So. First goal in the third period comes with 2.10 to go. As Butler might have got a piece, he also had... Maffeo putting it toward the net. We'll see who they give credit to. Team Indiana now down three. Wollington fans on the shot. Six goals in game one for Team Arizona. Five goals here in game two of this five-game weekend. Maffeo, odd man rush. Maffeo, backhand pass, looking for Putikov, who's laid out from Nelson. Ah, a and now a penalty. Putikov came right back after Nelson. And we're going to have our first penalty, or first power play, I should say, with 1.23 to go in a three-goal game. That's a trip against Putikov. Probably wasn't happy that Nelson laid him out, but came right back after. We saw him take him down. I don't think it was on that. It was a little yeah, bit after. Just after that, had his uh, got his stick caught up in his skate. So. So first time to the power play for Team Indiana. Farb, Miller, two of the three forwards. With McKee back on D, far back of the net. Tried to feed it in front. It goes all the way down. Kudakov in the box for tripping. He'll be in there for the rest of the game unless Team Indiana scores a power play goal. Had two goals today, both off the stick of Noah Farb. Farb yeah. And here he is once more. Farb on the backhand oh, nice. in front. Nice save oh, from good, Shardle. Good save. The shot came from Miller in front, it looked like. Along with Farb feeding the front, Miller was there along with Hosbeen. But Shardle puts his glove down and scoops it up. Niles couldn't exit. McKee gets it down low, all the way across. Save from Shardle with the chest into the corner. Niles will just ice it. Pudakov in the box. Niles puts it all the way down. 25 seconds now here in the final frame. Paulus rims it around. Caught up at the half wall. Flynn takes it to the corner with seven. One more try. Shardle chests it up. Back of the net. That and that will do it. 5-2. Team Arizona wins this one. They are 2-0 on this early weekend. Only one power play in this game, and it wasn't even a full one. But a final score of 5-2. to two. David, I got to thank you for joining me. Well, I appreciate you. I hope you guys us, have a great uh, rest of the weekend. Yeah, you too. Good luck with everything. You're obviously off to a good start. For our, uh, one of the, a couple of the takeaways for us is uh, we, got a, we got a couple of goals in. Uh, the first game we weren't, we were scoreless. So this is, you know, that's a, it's at least a step in the right direction. And uh, hopefully with a couple more games to go before the Sunday game, we'll be able to uh, get a win or two under our belt. So. We had some great goaltending from Andrew Bomer. He did. He really he had some good offensive yeah. opportunities. 
And there's going to be a lot of goals in the future for this Team okay. Indiana Team. Indiana team. Tierra, Arizona Copper, 2-0 on the weekend. We will see you tomorrow bright and early for you back in Arizona. 5 a.m. start tomorrow. For you guys, 7 a.m. right back here at the Plano Rink yeah. as Team AZ Copper will be back in action. Four games tomorrow. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook at Asha Hockey. A-H-S-H-A hockey on all your social media sites we thank david we thank our producer ben smith always doing an excellent stellar job and we will see you tomorrow thank you on top of the morning on top of the wave on top of the team on top of the days on top of my purpose i do i create y'all want to copy but we're not the same Sometimes when it can be dark, sometimes when it can be scary, sometimes you still gotta push on and just do what is necessary. You need that mindset, dog. You're just like a mercenary. You just gotta go push on. You just gotta go, go and get it. You gotta go be so fly. People around, they ask you why. Yeah, what is the reason you do it? Yeah, what is the reason you even try?